my memoir and the MGTA. MGTA, guys, welcome back. I'm going to talk about my story today. Some details will be left out because this is my MGTA channel and I'm trying to stay as anonymous as possible under these circumstances. But I want to talk about how I became a Christian, how that changed how I think about MGTA, and why I live by this philosophy. In general, the Bible has a lot of red pills. I was 15 when I first heard the Proverbs verse, it's better to live on the corner of a roof than with a flighty wife. Think of how annoying it is when a dog or pet paces around your room while you're trying to sleep. Now imagine that annoying behavior coming from someone you live with. It stayed with me, and little by little, it grew in my mind. My testimony isn't very different from anyone else's. There wasn't a life-changing event on the road to Damascus that made me stop being Saul and start being Paul. People have lived on this planet for a very long time. Not everyone can have a theophany like that, which is very cool. I'd like to connect it to what I've learned about MGTA. For me, MGTA and my testimony are two sides of the same coin. MGTA doesn't have a clear definition, but how I use it in my life depends on what I believe. I became a Christian on October 30th, 2004. I used to question everything when I was young. What does it all mean? Where do I want to go? What do I need to do next? Does anything have value? If I find in myself desires that nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical conclusion is that I was made for another world, said C.S. Lewis. When I accepted Christ, it felt like a warm waterfall was pouring its water all over me. I felt safe and I felt secure. There has never been another feeling like it. The Holy Spirit is what it is. When the Spirit takes over, you feel like you're on fire inside. It's the most important thing that has ever happened to me. But it got harder after that. Those who try to get away from this world will face trouble. Satan tries to hurt God's children, but he fails. Long story short, I accepted Christ on the same day I got out of outpatient rehab for depression and an eating disorder two years later. I had just turned 13 at the time. So young to go through something like that, but for the next two years, I had visions. I would see ghosts in more than one place. This started happening to me when I was nine. When I was five, I saw a person with a hood sitting in the bathroom. When I was nine, I saw a green person whose face was full of nails. I would see twisted, covered up figures for the rest of my childhood until I got rid of those chains and was let out of rehab. I've never been back, but it shows that we are in a spiritual war. Many of you can likely relate to this. I felt like I was on this path because I was trying to get away from something from my past, probably something that came from generations before me. We need to put an end to this. As I slowly start to think about MGTA, I start to move on to the next part of my life. I was just another guy in high school. I did have opportunities to go out on dates, but I was more of a homebody. I got sucked into the world of YouTube, gaming, and computers at a very young age. That's what I found fun. I was an athlete, but I wasn't particularly good at anything, and I grew up in a very rich area. I thought it was all very fake, and the things that gave my classmates status weren't things I wanted so I fell behind. I became more of a recluse, but as time went on, being a recluse started to give me a sense of power in a way I didn't know until I came across MGTA content. At age 20, I had my first relationship. It wasn't right for me to be there. It was a protest. At age 22, I got out of it. I soon got another one that lasted another four to five months. After that, that was the end. I'm glad I didn't get married or have kids after that because either one of those things could have happened. I told myself, never again. It was either the end of the world, or it was MGTA. To be a Christian MGTA, we must agree with Paul's final point. If you can deal with this, do so. I think this is a gift of the MGTA monks, and this gift is even more useful in the time of Jezebel. We live in the time of Jezebel, and the Bible says something about this. When Jezebel oversees the world, the end is close. In 1 Corinthians 7 6-7, Paul says, Now, I say this as a concession, not as an order. I wish everyone were like me. But each person has a gift from God that is unique to him or her. Also, 1 Corinthians 7 32-33 says, I want you to have nothing to worry about. The single man worries about things related to God and how to please God. But a married man worries about things in the world and how to make his wife happy, and his interests are split. Having a split heart is hard. I tried it and found out I couldn't do it. But that means that our call and time are much more important and that we must use them much more wisely.
There's nothing to chase. There's nothing to play. Diligence. But it's funny that everyone says that if you're single, you're gay. You're an intel if you're single. It will never say that you are good. Since, why? The Jezebel runs the whole world. We are getting close to the end, and I hope to reach our brothers through this MGTOK channel and wake us up to the fact that woe to the man who lives for the world. We are supposed to be in the world, but not of it. If a person loves the world, he does not love God. People will say bad things about us because of this they will call us ascetics. But that's what they called our savior as well. They said he was possessed by demons. They said he was a drunk. It seems that shaming words have always been around. How to become a Christian. I had a dream at the start of the pandemic. It was a picture of a lake of fire with a long, narrow, rocky stone bridge going across it. At the beginning of the bridge, there was a horse-drawn carriage with a skeleton in it. It had a whip on its back. The scene changed to a cave wall that was on fire. A scroll with the words woe to him who doesn't know me appeared on that wall. It's a very bad thing. There is nothing worse than being cut off from Christ's love, the promises he has made for us, and the eternal friendship he gives us. It's the best thing in the world. Look at all the pain, suffering, illness, loss, famines, explosions, disasters, and other bad things that are happening right now. If this is the end, I feel so sad and down. It can't be like this. Good people are taken from this world, and the lives that look like they have a lot of promise are cut short. What gives? Why does it make sense? The reason for this is that we live in a broken world and Christ is the only way to fix it. Here we are. This is what I have to say. Christ gives us more joy and satisfaction than anything else we can think of. Think about how much you want to go to places like Bora Bora, Greece, Dubai, Hawaii, Bali, and Ibiza. All these fun places to hang out. People want to go everywhere and see all this beauty because, by most people's standards, life is short. So, let's enjoy it and see as much as we can while we can. But if you believe in Christ, you will spend all of the eternity seeing things that are much more beautiful than what you see right now. Don't give it up. I'm reminded today, don't trade it away, and that this is how I need to go after it. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. I know that a lot of people who listen are not Christians, but for me, Christianity and MGTOW go together. I can't tell them apart, and the Bible is the book with the most red pills that I've ever read. The problem is that all the red is taken away and replaced with blue pill pixie dust.